I'm not, I'm, it's, it's not a concourse car because I drive it a lot. But where do you think on a scale of rat rod to probably a concourse car? What do you think, well, rat rod being zero and concourse being 10? What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. We have today my Series 1Z. For the longest while, I've had this car. I've had some videos about it. We've featured it from time to time. But today I want to do something different. I wanted to focus on this car, kind of move away from the G a little bit. And the reason I wanted to focus this car is I met recently a cool individual. We were, tr we were trying to do a collab, but things didn't work out. He had a really nice Z, triple carb setup, beautiful sounding, but things happened and that didn't work out. But then after a while I noticed this special individual has a cool gig. He does a lot of pre-purchase inspections, a lot of market value inspections for potential buyers and ins insurance companies. But the cool part about it, his market share is classic cars. Which brings us to the Z. I've always had the Z. It's always been hidden away and has always been my guilty pleasure. So I've been wanting to do a, co a collaboration with this guy and I was like, wow, let's go ahead. Let's get a quote unquote inspection of my little Z that we restored to be a driver's car. Honestly, kind of gone way beyond that. I spent a little too much time nitpicking the hell out of the small details. So I would really like to get an idea of what he thinks of this car compared to what he sees on a normal everyday basis. We all know it's a 1970 240Z. It's a series one, build date model uh, March 70. So it's an early low VIN. It's not super low, but it's a very low VIN considering they made probably 300,000, 400,000 of these cars. Mm. So there were, it, there's a crap ton of Zs they built back in the day. All right, Ryan. So on an everyday basis, how, how many cars do you look at? I usually look at about five to six a day. Uh, they kind of vary sometimes, you know, pre-purchase people in the market just to look at, you know, anything from explorers to and then a couple classics usually the classics i look at are usually like broker cars uh they'll be at a facility can you know get it on a lift kind of look at overall condition mm -hmm. problem with some of those cars is you know it's not the the seller and it may be a resto mod from like 05 and things like that so you see a lot of like small stuff that's not great and then uh you know lack of information on a lot of stuff so I really appreciate this car because, you know, you, you have a history with it. You did it as a one owner car, you know, like there's no guessing games, I guess, it's, you know, it's a lot easier. And I mean, you can tell just looking at it, you know, the, the small details and everything are done right. It's a beautiful car. Uh, we rode in it earlier. It drives amazing. It dri I think it drives better than my 280, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so it's really a car that I appreciate. I know you do. And it shows a lot of love and enjoyment. And that's what it's about, you know. Yeah. Initially, how does this rank or initially to some of the classic cars you see every day, how does this fit in? Like in a grade of one to 10, I guess, paint, the trim, interior, stuff like that. What do you think? Like, uh, how do you grade cars and uh, like what? First, I, I try to find out like where the car's been and kind of history and see that kind of stuff kind of before I even look at a car. Like I said, sometimes that's not available on this car that's there uh usually i'll look at you know the small detail stuff you know like the moldings and things like that because i mean that's pretty hard to to restore nowadays or it could be uh like i was looking at the dash and that's a beautiful dash you know the even the hardware you know stuff like that I try to look at and then kind of go to the bigger pictures you know like paint and stuff and i think the paint's gorgeous the body lines are gorgeous uh bumpers you know all that stuff. Uh, the engine bay, I was, I was actually impressed with the engine bay. <laughs> what in the heck? On that, that mm -hmm. stuff, like, if I give a grade, like, some people are insanely picky, you know, mm -hmm. like, to me, like, I, you know, like this, you know, they'll be like, right, oh, yeah, you know, so it's like, that's hard for me to grade something when someone else, you know, their views may be but I also try to look at stuff like, man, this car is like a survivor. What do you tell me about some of the other things you notice? Uh, well, first off, I know you're doing this video. You do videos on a lot of 
other people's cars and stuff, and you don't really want to boast about your car, uh, which I get. But I mean, this car is beautiful to me, and I think it's a, you know, it's a survivor. It's got good history, things like that. A lot of cars don't have that. You know, a lot of people restore cars, and that's totally different. You know, like this car is kind of a time capsule. Yeah, I mean, it's done right. Uh, first off, it's very clean. You know, I mean, even small things like clamps and things like that you can look at and it's like, well, why did this person do that? And it makes you wonder. And then that's usually the small little details is when you, you find other things. But, you know, looking at this engine bay, honestly, on the whole car, like I was really impressed with this. Plus the fact of the matter is, you know, when you bought this car, you were gonna originally RB swap it. And to me, I think it's, it's almost harder going back to factory form over modding, you know, like anybody can do that, but it takes a lot of work and some dedication to go back to that. So. Like looking at this engine bay, I think it's beautiful. Uh, it's done right, it performs right. And on the way over here, I said, you know, this is what it's about, like driving on a back road on a sunny day. I don't think, you know, non-car people, they don't get that, you know, like, oh, it's just a car. Or they're looking at it and they're like, oh, it's a classic, you know, but it, it's really about like the enjoyment, you know, and you, like, this is your car, you know, you put time and energy and money and, you know, some stress and, things like that into this car and you can enjoy it now and I mean it, it shows the care you know really can't find anything that's you know not done right uh, I mean it's just overall beautiful the attention to detail is amazing uh, that's that's thank you um, that's honestly it's like my OCD car I didn't want to go this route I, I say a lot that this is the car I hate to love if I had to go this route, I had to. I, I knew I had to be as correct as I can. I, I, mm. I, I can't be too anal about it because I drive it. There's things I have to let slide, but it's nice to know that I'm still capturing, I guess, the essence mm -hmm. of what the car is. And that's what I'm trying to do. Just trying to be as pure as I can without going so crazy that I can't drive it. Uh, this car, I appreciate this vehicle because, you know, you did the transmission swap. My car was a you know 280. It had the four speed, and that was the biggest drawback. I couldn't drive it on the interstate. It was a pain. Mm -hmm. uh, I just really couldn't enjoy it. You know, you, you have to kind of map out. It's like, especially roads around here. You're like, oh, I probably can't drive on that road, or it's not fun. But you know, you did the trans swap. It's tuned, runs right, feels right. All the suspension feels good. I know that you were kind of picky about the the mount, but. To me, it feels, you know, it feels good. It feels mm -hmm. better than my vehicle. Uh, so, so what Ryan's getting at is, like I said, once again, driver's, driver's car. This car originally came with a four-speed transmission. What I did during the restoration, we took out the original four-speed gearbox and we put in a five-speed gearbox because I knew I wanted to drive this car. It'll be taken on the highway. On the back roads, one through four is fine. But when you get in the interstate, on fourth gear at probably 5,000 RPMs, it gets annoying. With the fifth gear, a cruising gear, I can really take this to shows, go drive around, go visit the family and stuff like that. That's one thing, like say, another part of being a driver's car. This car again, like, I love that, you know, where you stored it, but you drive it. You know, a lot of people, you know, they park it, they don't enjoy it. Personally, I'm bad with that. Like, I think cars need to be driven. It shows that you, you know, addressed all aspects of the vehicle and you did it right. If you're gonna make a a driver's car, like this is the car to do it. You know, mm. you can make power on other stuff. I get, you know, swaps and people making power on these, but these cars just feel different. You know, they, they, they feel right. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people say like, oh, the car feels like a go-kart or whatever, you know, but I think this car and it's, even in its factory form, it just, it just feels right, you know. One of the, the only hindrance with driving this car for me is heat outside. Because there's no AC, this car never was available with AC, but back in the day, dealers added on a compressor and a drill a hole through the firewall and put in aftermarket AC. Being hot outside in the south, that is a hindrance sometimes. But I try to drive it as much as I can. Uh, inside, like, well, obviously, first thing, you know, vents here, all the gaps are right. Like, I love the way this door shuts. It's just solid. Yeah, it just, man, it feels, it feels right, you know, stuff like that. Again, the moldings and all that, but on the actual interior, you know, a lot of people have, you know, 
you know, the carbon uh, door panels or what's it name? Skillard. Yeah, the Skillard. Skillard. Sill plates. Yeah, the Skillard. You know, Skillard. Everything. Those are those are nice and everything. But this car, you know, it's it's done right. It has, you know, still has the gauges. You know, you got the cigarette lighter. It's just cool to me. You know, mm -hmm. the gauges look great actually. You know, some a lot of these. You know, you get you pick one up and spend rest of the money. It's got like you know auto meter gauges and things from the 90s and things like that so just looking at this car i really appreciate it. and the steering wheel something about that steering wheel is beautiful to me, yeah you know? so one thing with the steering wheel to note is that this is a series one steering wheel mm -hmm. so you see how it has the dimples mm -hmm. but are not punched oh really yes yeah. so the series one steering wheel was like that and uh, from mid 71 and on they punched a hole in the steering the little oh, dimple geez. so that's a series one part Another series one thing on the inside is the seats. So you see the side adjusters, you probably get like 20 degree adjustment, nothing. It's really uncomfortable. So a lot of people in series two was the full normal little click, you know, could really decline probably like a good 45, 50 degree yeah. tilt. But yeah, that's so there's a lot of stuff on here that was changed mid 71 and a lot of people that had the earlier cars swapped them out because there are day-to-day -day conveniences, options, or those parts. Yeah, and even, you know, small stuff like the sun visors, you know, they're not torn up and things like that. The headliner looks great, you know, like things like that. And, you know, the trunk looks great. It all fits correctly. Everything's, everything's nice, you know. It's driver car, but it's just nice. That's mm -hmm. what it should be. Uh, can you talk about the, the paint color? So the paint is a uh, sunshine yellow. Nine one nine is the paint code. It is uh, earlier yellow. It's a uh, it's more on the rarer side, and this is the original color of the car from from factory. I think mid after seventy one, it went to more of a lime yellow color. Um, but it's a uh, when we were restoring it, uh, the company that was doing the job they asked if we want to clear it. I was like, no, we got to go with um, single stage. So there's no clear. All this is single stage paint. Were you on the fence ever about that or? I was. Yeah. Because for longevity, a clear coat is better. It protects you on the color and everything like that. Yeah. Um, you know, you're paying some money on that, you know, considerable mm -hmm. amount of money. And well, this was, this was back around 2010, 2012. Mm -hmm. So back then, I think a paint job was still around like 3,500, four grand chunk of change still though yeah. it's chunk of change back yeah. in the day yeah. yes uh, yes it was a chunk yeah. of change back yes but it's not astronomical as it is now are these emblems <laughs> those are the 50 year old emblems are they original to the car geez that alone and it's metal it's the original metal yeah. emblem because you know i see people putting the other ones on and mm -hmm. you know they're plastic and all that stuff that that alone is impressive geez. those are reproduction okay the vents are reproduction because I think these were all always plastic. Yeah. So they deteriorated. But the metal badge is like, I think. This is only a 240? This is only Series 1. Okay. That's... So the Series 1 had these vents. And the Series 2 had the vents on the side pillar. So let me just uh, do it. Should things there. Sorry? Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> so. Put that in. This, this, so the Series 1 had these vents. And they're exit air was the hatch mm -hmm. the series two the, the exit air was in the side with the z the glass on the series one is vertical the frost lines the series two is horizontal the frost lines yeah when i first looked at the rear end i noticed the glass mm -hmm. and then you know i saw the vents and i've never seen these vents but i've never seen a series one z before you know i think that's super cool yeah back in the day they didn't really have ac so what they did to cool the occupants was free flowing air there's ducts in the front of the car that pulls air and runs through channels into the cabin and then these exits on the early one is the rear here on the newer ones the exits are here so it pull air through the cabin so you just suck an exhaust from the car in front of you <laughs> Jeez, <man. laughs> the faster you go the cooler you are just sucking in the air, smoking a cigarette. Yeah, so yeah, these ducks right here, those are fresh air ducks. Yeah, I was looking at that earlier. So the, the air comes through here Jeez. and goes in here, channels through here, 
and it comes in the cabin. There's little, there's push locks yeah. to lock the, um, the tunnel, vent. open and close the tunnel. 70s AC outside air. For some reason I always thought this, this was cool though. So the cowl area there, yeah, the it is cowl. cool, but it's also one of the Achilles heels off this chassis. Because people, where they park the car and whatever, if they have like, because California too and some northern places, pines and trees and stuff. Uh, all those pines and trees used to get into these vents right here and all debris and dirt used to accumulate. And this cowl area used to wash to the side, spit out behind the fender and drain behind. But when those people get all the debris and stuff in there, it used it to clog clogged. and it used to stay moist. Ooh, so geez. a lot of cars here used to just rot. Yeah. And down here, you just rot. I was very lucky that this car was a California car. And when I got it, it was just a lot of surface rust, which is typical. Rot is the problem. Surface mm. rust, you want surface rust. You don't want rot. How did you find this car? So I was doing the family guy thing for a number of years. I've always wanted a 240. When I lived back home on the island, my uncle had two 280 ZXs. Mm. He had a T-top and a regular one. And I've always loved those cars and they always, they just always had a, a place in my heart. After a while, the kids started getting older and started doing their own thing. So I decided it's time to look for a 240. Started looking at the interweb and stuff like this. It was back in 2007, 2008. I found on Craigslist, that was a thing back then. <laughs> on Craigslist, I saw an ad for this 240 and it was rough. It was really rough. I'll insert a picture on uh, the day we picked it up. It was a roller. It was in Gallatin, Tennessee, 30, mm -hmm. 45 minutes from here. Drove up. Like I said, I didn't even know what a Series 1 was. I just know it was a 240. It was cheap. I drove up, checked it out, saw the body. I was just flabbergasted in love and pulled it onto a flatbed and took it home. One owner car from California. She migrated to Tennessee. Probably, oh, I don't know, I can't remember when. She bought the car, she drove the car, loved the car. Then something happened mechanically. She never fixed it, it just sat. Mm -hmm. And just, she got into family life with kids and stuff. And it just got dilapidated. And I picked it up with Wang Gang Midnight in my heart. Mm -hmm. Wanted to make a Devil Z. Come to find out because of forums what it is. And I sat many a days thinking of which way to go many a days yeah that's that's still impressive that you went back to factory because the intention yeah the original intention of this car was absolutely 100 percent yeah. rb you don't see that too often you know but it's definitely the car to do it with yeah because yeah, back in the day there was no series one craze in 2008 there was no series one craze right now there's a series one craze it was so easy to mod this car mm -hmm. after market support it was just real easy to just balls to the walls but the day that engine turned over the numbers matching engine was the day i literally cried because i knew i couldn't go rest on mod anymore it's a beautiful car i love these cars because everybody is somehow attached to it you know that everybody's got a story like their mom had one or their you know grandfather had one or whatever and like i have all the cars i've had this car pulls the most attention but it's like a positive you know mm -hmm. like some cars are you know look at it and you know you have a rx7 people are like oh is it got a ls in it and you know all that crap and people have views but this car it's just kind of pure like people always it like brings other people joy i think that's the only car that's been like that for me you know it, it, it it's true it's true that you say that it there are so many numbers nissan produced so many of these that it impacted so many lives. And if it didn't impact a person directly, I've heard so many stories about my friend had one, mm -hmm. my neighbor had one, my best friend had, my aunt, my uncle. Mm -hmm. There's so many, um, what, what's that um, that game, um, Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon or some shit, when you kind of find into their connections. It's kind of like that for the Z, you know? Um, there's so many stories I get when I take this out. The best story I got was this old couple husband and wife married for almost 40 years guys and they were talking and remembering their first date was when he picked her up in a yellow z oh jeez. and they we, we stood there we talked about for half an hour and they just looked over it and they were just reminiscing and remembering 
about their early days. It was just cool. So Ryan, what do you think? As a summary, you inspecting this car in your everyday job, and I ask Ryan, inspect this car. Should I spend money on this car? Uh, first off, I'd you know ask what you're looking for. Uh, you know what kind of budget. Uh, I would look at this car, and I try to look at vehicles as you know. I'd, I just solely look at the vehicle. You know, I don't look at what you know buyer or seller says because I've been in both spots. That's how. That's why I got into this because I got tired of gambling and. Uh, you know, there's always a hidden story or, you know, this and that, and I get people trying to sell vehicles, you know, they you need to move it and all that stuff. So I try to just look at the vehicle and just go over, it, you know, unbiased, anything I find, document, mm -hmm. and then, you know, obviously I usually take about, you know, 100, 150 pictures, measurements, uh, and then just give it to the buyer and just tell them, you know, like, hey, this is my opinion on the vehicle. Uh, and let them, you know, if they want it, that's up to them. But that's not my place to. Oh, okay. To, so you you know you don't give like a final report if yes, no, whatever. We just I I give do them some, all the facts. I'll give ratings, you know, mm -hmm. like paint and body. I'll rate that and mm -hmm. overall ratings and things like that. I just try to stay away from getting involved in you know pushing somebody to buy or sell. Like I'll even say like, hey, you know, an appraisal on this vehicle. Uh, just any information or background or anything I can find on a vehicle to help them. Uh, Make decide a on that and mm -hmm. you know I, I do that on uh, regular vehicles too because those are sometimes a little bit harder because you know people are trying to buy stuff online now and it's crazy some of the vehicles you know they're on lots and stuff so uh, obviously I enjoy this stuff more but I really just try to be the middleman and you know it's like I believe in ethics and you know this is this is the vehicle and then do you want it or not and leave it up to them you know would you buy this? Yeah, I would definitely if, if the price is right. <laughs> if the price is right, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Would you take this to Mecum? Uh, that's a tough question. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Because that's a that, that's a tough crowd. Yeah. Yeah, that. I mean that. That's actually a pretty tough question. I would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely would. Uh, we know we do, I don't want to put a value on it cuz I'm not trying to sell it. I'm not I'm, it's it's not a concourse car cuz I drive it a lot. But where do you think on a scale of rat rod to probably a concourse car? What do you think well rat rod being 0 and concourse being 10? Uh definitely not a rat rod. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean you can look at it and tell that. Uh, <laughs> I again it's kind of hard. I I put it up close to in, in terms of what you see on a daily basis and how you would grade something? Uh, this car is this car is a lot better than what I usually see. I usually see vehicles, there's always one or two things, you know, wrong or, you know, like, I usually measure paint and, like, you can tell, you know, paint's not great, it may look great, but it's not. And uh, Vins, you know, sometimes missing vins. And, again, the engine bay stuff, for whatever reason, you look at an engine bay and there's just little minor things that are kind of annoying, you know, like mm -hmm. clamps off or, you know, like old school mods and things. I think, again, this car is done right. I can tell, like, looking over, there's a lot of attention to detail, uh, but it, you know, you drive it too, you know, so I'd probably say like a nine or so. Really? Yeah, it, it's that's a hard, hard thing to... That's a hard thing to do, but yet you rate it so high. Yeah, I mean, I, to me, it's, I'd say eight or nine, you know. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, like, say, I, 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 I don't want. I was. I. It, it's. It's kind of gratifying to get um, an assessment of your work. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will be honest. Um, I'm not trying to get get anybody or force anybody to say it's the best thing out there. Um, I'm just trying to get a gauge of what you see in a day-to-day -day basis and what this is. Well, I mean, I'm considering that you know this is a, a rare car too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It's not just a 240. Uh, so a, a rare car like this in this condition, I, you know, value it a little bit higher, you know, and, and again, I know we talk about declared values and stuff, and mm -hmm. I think that's part of what I do is people look at vehicles, you know, and they need, they need insurance and, you know, if they ever do want to sell it, like they do need some sort of documentation and a declared value, and that's a little bit different from what we're talking about, but uh, I mean, overall, like, 
considering this vehicle's rarity and you know you took it back to stock and everything is across the board clean you know uh, I mean that's what I would say about it oh that's cool that's that, that's really really awesome that that that's you rated there that's pretty cool kind of shocked actually <laughs> I can say it wasn't it wasn't an intention no. it wasn't an intention um, and I'm, but that's cool. I mean, that's just my view on it, but somebody else may have a different view, but mm -hmm. I'm overall like trying to look at the vehicle. This is one of those vehicles, like go find another one, you know, it's, it's probably not going to happen, you know, right. or you're going to pay a lot. So I'm, yeah. I try to look at the actual vehicle too, you know. No, oh, man, that's cool, dude. I appreciate your time to yeah. meet me today, come out, finally get to do a collaboration. Yeah, I wanted one to. One day, hopefully, it'll be with a car. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to on my last one, but I yeah. just sold it, and it wasn't, no, wasn't mine anymore. It's awesome, though. No, thank you, guys. Um, thank Ryan for coming out today and, and giving me his honest opinion. I did not pass any money. Um, here's the check, by the way. Um, <laughs> There's no check. <laughs> But yeah, it was just like I said, it was just a, uh, we wanted to collaborate a long time ago with his car, do a mic'd up episode with his Z. It never happened. We kept talking about different collaborations and I just felt this would be a cool one depending on his job. And I'd like to thank him. Um, yeah. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, thank you. And if you ever need anything, it's privatecarinspection.com. Let me know. And what's your, do you have, what's your best way, uh, Instagram, email, I'll just put it in the description? Yeah, yeah, you can put all that on there, I have an Instagram account. And, okay. Yeah, so. we'll put all that in the description. If you guys need to get something checked out, man, holler at him. Yeah, um, I'd love to do it. Uh, definitely, I am the type of person that attached to cars, but he changed them like he changes his drawers. Yeah. So he knows cars. <laughs> he, almost every week, he has a brand new car. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to stay away from that my insurance guys kind of <laughs> kind of getting annoyed so yeah. well guys if you like this episode and like this vlog if you were blown away by the assessment that i was um hit that like guys hit that sub and until next time guys y'all take it easy